Hello, I've demonstrated before an audio format which records onto, well, essentially Hi8 tapes. And it can record eight channels individually and it was used in recording studios. And you could even cascade machines to get multiple uh, sets of eight recordings. And you could synchronize them all and it assisted with mixing later. Now, I have a suitable machine for this. Uh, there was a high resolution version and I have the DA98HR machine from Tascam. But look, it's not happy. I switch it on and it's flashing low bat. So uh, we need to work on this machine. Now, unfortunately, it's uh, buried under some other equipment and all that will have to be moved as well. And it's really in an awkward spot. Some of that other equipment uh, actually converts the eight channel uh, digital audio from the back of this uh, DA98HR into a format that's compatible with a competing product, which was uh, the Alesis uh, eight channel audio recording system, which normally recorded onto Super VHS tape, and they could be recorded then onto a hard disk recorder. So all that equipment is connected up to this uh, DA98HR. Right, so let's get it moved, get it into the workshop and see what the problem is. Right, so I've got it onto the workbench. Let's have a look. So power it up and it just goes through the Tascam thing. That says das Tascam. Right, low battery, warning. I'm not sure if the machine will still function in this state, but it's certainly not happy. Can I still play a tape? I think it's working, but you can't get to the normal uh, functions on here, so it's very inconvenient. We uh, need to fix it. Oh yes, you can't just press eject on these when they're playing, because the professional format is designed to prevent accidents. You have to press stop first. Right. A quick look at the uh, service manual tells us that there's a way of reading the battery voltage. So. I think you have to press these three buttons when you power up. And then stop. There's a knack to it. <laughs> and you can't get to N. Oh, hang on, have I done it? Was that N? Ah, I might have done it. N, okay, I'm getting there. Enter. So there we can see our battery voltage is at 0.8 volts. Yesterday when I read that, it was about 1.6. And it's not a rechargeable battery. It's a CR2032 uh, lithium cell. So clearly that is a desperate need of replacement. Now my plan is, if the battery connector allows us to get, hold, get to both sides of the battery terminal without a major strip down, that I will apply a small voltage from a power supply via resistor or something to keep it safe that will hopefully keep any uh, settings and readings such as head hours stored within the unit uh, but it may not be possible uh, the schematic tells me which board the battery holder is on but I can't actually see the battery holder on the diagrams or what kind of battery holder it has so we'll just have to take it apart and have a look now I have worked on this machine before, uh, the problem these often have is that the lubrication of a pin, uh, which is a pivot if you like, of the back tension arm on the deck uh, gets all dried up and sticky and then the back tension arm sits in the wrong place and the result is it will damage tapes. So that's long since been done and I've lubricated that pin on all three of my uh, DTRS compatible machines. But this is my preferred machine because it's got the high resolution option so it will play more different types of tape. Right, where's the main board and where's the battery? Well there it is and we like that. We like that a lot because I can get to both terminals of the battery holder so I can apply a small voltage on there to keep it backed up. Firstly though, let's uh, take a look at the battery voltage. Well, if the real voltage is 40 something millivolts, there's not much point putting um, a backup supply in there. <laughs> it's already well and truly gone. So we'll just go ahead and change that battery, I think. 
Okay, so we'll uh, use a battery from our favourite supplier, IKEA. Um, there are lots of cheap CR2032s available on eBay, but I obviously want something that's going to be decent. And actually, stuff from IKEA is, I think. Right then, how do we get this battery out? I've got to be very careful not to uh, put any load on the circuit board, any pressure. There we go, it tilts out like that. Let's put the new one in as quickly as I can and without putting my fingers across the terminals as much as possible. Okay, let's uh, look at the voltage on that one. Remembering, of course, that the terminals are not the way around you expect them to be. Positive is the large side. Oh, that's a lot happier, isn't it? Right, okay. Much happier. And can we look at the head hours, version and drum time, enter, drum total, and search. So, search is 31 hours, total is 447 hours. So I'm glad to say those settings have been retained. They must have been stored elsewhere, or it's got some sort of uh, way of holding those readings, even with the battery out. Right, just to get it to read the battery voltage itself as well. Battery 3.3 volts. Excellent. Right, I'll put the lid on this and then I've got a few more things to do. Right, that's a tape which has a recording on it. And we have a brand new tape here. I've been asked by somebody to make a test recording so he can get his uh, DA88 serviced. Uh, now, of course, this isn't going to be, you know, a, a factory alignment quality recording, but at least it would be a known good recording. So though they are essentially normal Hi8 tapes, uh, the machines, I believe, prefer these particular tapes. Uh, the formulation is designed, I believe, for low headwear and uh, for very low dropout. You have to put a formatting recording down first before you can use the tape. Not sure if it applies to the... DTRS branded ones or if it's only normal Hi8 tapes so we'll find out in a minute and the other thing I need to do is because he has a DA88 machine not this DA98HR I'm going to have to tell the machine to not use a high resolution format it needs to be compatible with the older earlier 16-bit uh, format right okay reading the instructions a brand new tape still needs formatting because then you get to select what kind of format you're going to use. In this case, non-HR, and I'll use 44 uh, kilohertz sampling rate. You can record at the same time as formatting, and there is a sine wave generator built into the machine. But whether you can record that sine wave generator signal on the format, I'm not so clear. So I'll do it in two separate steps. I'll do the format, and then I'll do a test recording from its own built-in signal generator. Right, let's try that. I'm just going to have a look at this sign thing and see if there's any possibility of recording that during formatting. So, menu 2, I think it said. Sign oscillator, normally off, on, 1 kilohertz, I'll have it. OK. And we'll put the tape in and rewind. Well, it is rewound. Available tracks, all are lit. I did at one time have a bad uh, contact on one of these, so I had to resolder it. That's fixed now. Press the format FS key and the indicator starts blinking. Press it again within five seconds and it lights steadily. OK. Press HR to determine whether you're high resolution or not. No. Select the sampling frequency by pressing the format FS key. Oh, that's altering this. OK, 44.1. Very small little LED there. I don't know if you can quite see that. That's the one. So I don't want 48. I'm going to 44 for this one. 44.1. If HR mode is not selected, it's impossible to select any other track combination than 8 base frequency. That's good. To start formatting, hold record and press play. 
Right, we'll leave that uh, formatting. I don't think it's recording anything, though. OK, I'll let that run to the end of the tape. OK, we've rewound the tape. Confirmed that the sign oscillator is on. It might be that I could have recorded it during the uh, tape formatting, but I didn't. Arm the tracks. Uh, and I think you have to press the input monitor buttons. Right. That's it. They're all lit. Right, they're all lit and armed. I think now I can just hit record. Good, and it's recording that on all tracks. OK, it's made that uh, test recording. Get out the menus, switch off these. Right, so if I hit play, I should see those signals. And I also, you can, you can look at the errors on here, can't you? There's a way of doing that. Let's find that. Right, so if we go into uh, mode number nine here, it, one of the options is BER, bit error rate display. So we enter that, BER display, enter. And when we press play, we'll see them all fill up with errors for just a moment, and then they're clear. And we'll see the VU meters all go to the test signal. So any moment now, there we go. Oh, no errors at all. And VU meters all solid. If I hit stop, and play. There we are, they all light up with errors for a moment. Right, that machine's working perfectly, and I can send that tape to the chap who needs it. Uh, and when I put this back into the studio, I reconnect that uh, TDIF1 digital output to the converter I have so that the output of this can be recorded all eight channels simultaneously on the Elysis unit. And that means it's much easier to, uh, to do your editing later because they're all synchronized. The other thing I need to do before I send this tape away is test it on an actual DA88. So uh, I have the machine here. You can see the lovely sort of uh, logo that goes across the LEDs when you switch it on. And uh, pop the tape in. And you can see that that's playing properly on there. So that's ready to go. Right, I hope you've enjoyed what I've done here. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.